Then the other church is uh, this one, the African African Methodist Episcopal Church by Hano Kimsokera Piri, 1924. So the mission was established by Reverend Hano Kimsokera Piri in Kasung. So Reverend Kimsokera, he attended Livingstonia Mission Schools and became a full convent uh, in 1907. So take note, Livingstonia did a lot in educating uh, most notable people, uh, the first notable people in Nyasaland, who did a lot to the uh, history or to the independence of Marao. So, uh, Msokera in Kasungu, we are saying that he came all the way from Kasungu to attend the uh, Livingstonia schools. And he left for South Africa and he joined the African Methodist Episcopal Church. When he came back home in 1924, he opened up a mission station at Kaningina Kaning, Kaning, in Kasung. Kaningina, Kaninga, Kaningina, Kaningina, Kaningina in Kasung. And it expanded to Mase, Wimbe, Kabambe and Mchinji. So he opened that mission station, we are talking of Kaningina in Kasungu, and uh, it expanded to Mwase, Wimbe, uh, Kabambe and Mchinji. I was trying to analyze Kaningina here, Kaningina, uh, because I know Kaningina in Mzuzu. So I have never heard of Kaningina in Kasungu. So uh, uh, we hear th this one, Kaninga, Kasungu, uh, Kaningina. Yeah, so he opened that mission, sta uh, mission station when he came back from South Africa of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We talk of Hanok Msokera, Piri, remember that one. So he did that. So Msokera opened his own church because, number one, he was dissatisfied with education offered by the Dutch Reformed Church Mission. So uh, he was not happy, uh, he was not uh, satisfied with the education that the DRCM was offering in the central region. So he wanted to promote the education of African children. So Piri regarded education as crucial to evangelization and civilization of Africans. So with that, uh, that's why he opened his own church to say, no, we need to put much emphasis on education because it is the key to civilization, even to evangelization, the spreading of the gospel. So if we don't educate our children, if we don't educate our young ones, therefore no civilization, no good civilization, and uh, even the spreading of the gospel will not be done. And also he wanted to break free from the European control. So see to it having been educated by the Estonia mission he went out and gained some experience in evangelization when he came back said no these african uh, european school, uh, schools are not good we have to emphasize on education of our own and even the preaching of our own hence he opened his own church so his church offered the preaching of the gospel which is evangelization and formal education as well, and technical skills like carpentry. So that's what he did. In he, when he established his church, he was offering all these services to Africans. Another church is the last church of God and his Christ by Jordan Musumba, 1924. Last church of God and his Christ by Jordan Musumba, 1924. So Msumba was a Tonga from Gadabe and he formed his church in 1924. So he was educated under the Livingstonia Mission. Oh, Livingstonia Mission did a lot uh, to do, uh, uh, to educate or to open up uh, uh, 
Africans into the new horizons of, uh, of the preaching of the gospel. So in 1900, he went to South Africa as a labor migrant where he met Joseph Booth. Look again, Joseph Booth comes in again. So uh, this Joseph Booth uh, maybe has to be remembered uh, in a very, very special way in as far as independent churches are concerned in, uh, in Malawi. So when he came back, uh, that is Msumba. Uh, when he came back home, he joined the Watchtower movement of Eliot Gaman. So he was later excommunicated from this church for practicing polygamy. So he joined the Watchtower movement, just as you know, as you can remember now to say, Gaman now was gathering uh, uh, more popularity among the people of Gadabe, Mzimba, and Rumbi. So when uh, Msumba came back from South Africa, he joined this Watchtower movement, but he had a problem. What was the problem? He practiced polygamy. He had uh, two wives. So with that, the Watchtower movement said, no, 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 not, not this one. Of course, we want uh, to be independent from the uh, European churches, but uh, not to the extreme of going to this far. Then when um, Sumba was uh, excommunicated, he founded the last church of God and his Christ, which allowed polygamy, uh, feasting, and also by baptized converts by total immersion. So it was like a mixture there to say, all right, you, you said those uh, who are practicing polygamy are not going to, uh, to heaven. No, uh, we accommodate them here, polygamy here. Feasting must be here, uh, a little bit testing of uh, some, some liquor. And uh, baptism is also by immersion, just as the others were doing. So this church gives a good example of protest against the foreign nature of Christianity and attempt an attempt to bring missionary faith in the line with the traditional practices. So in this Musumba's church, it is the church that was uh, a good example to say it is the church that is developed in the tradition of Africans, in the tradition of what Africans are doing, polygamy, beer drinking, and many others. So in, in that context where people, Africans are doing the same, let them also uh, be Christians in the same way. So in 1924, in 1924, Msumba moved to Karonga where he influenced Ben Sirwani Ngemera. So uh, he influenced Ben Sirwani Ngemera of the Nyakusa, Nyakusa. And eventually the church was called Ngemera Church. Ngemera Church. So this last church in Katabe is still there. And the Ngemera Church in Kalonga, it is still there. So we are saying that in 1924, Musumba, uh, he moved to Kalonga and he met with the, uh, uh, Ngemera, Sirwani, Ben Sirwani Ngemera, and they became friends and they opened the church. And in Kalonga, it was not called the ch last church of God, but it was called the Ngemera church after the founder, that was the Ben Sirwani Ngemera. So the church lacked educated elite and mainly drew its membership from Ngonde, Tonga, Nyakusa, and uneducated hangers. So basically, this church, it was like the church that was deep rooted in the tradition of the Africans and not in the education of the Europeans. As such, it was basically uh, going through the uneducated. It was gaining popularity in the uneducated people. So it was gaining much popularity among the Ngonde, the Tonga, Nyakusa, and most of the uneducated Henga from Rumpi. Then there is another one that we are looking at, and this one is Mpingo wa Afipa Mu Africa. Mpingo wa Afipa Mu Africa. So the Church of the Black of Africa. The Church of the Black of Africa. So this church uh, in 1935, it was uh, an amalgamation, a union of many independent churches like Ecclesia Rwanangwa of Charles Chidongo Chinula, the Black Man's Church of Yesaya Zerenje Mwase, 
and the African Reformed Presbyterian Church of Yafet Mponda Mkandavile. So it was a union of uh, small churches that were formed by different people. So we talk of Ecclesia Wanangwa that was formed by Chidongo Chinua, Charles Chidongo Chinua, and the Black Man's Church of Yesaya Zerenje Mwase, and the African Reformed Presbyterian Church that is of Yafet Mponda Mkandawire. They came together and formed the Mpingo Wa Athipa Mu Africa. So the following are some of the churches uh, that uh, formed Mpingo, Mpingo, of, Mpingo Wa Fipa Mu Africa. We have talked of the Black Man's Church by Isaiah Zerenje Mwase. So in 1933, he formed his church, the Black Man's Church of Africa. So Mwase was supported by a number of notable chiefs from Kadabe, such as Malenga Mzoma, Chiweyo, Fukamapiri, Kabunduri, Nkumbira, and Timbiri. So all these chiefs, they supported the formation of this church. So Mwase therefore advocated the creation of independent churches directly under African control. So he was advocating, he was emphasizing much to say, now we need to have a church that is controlled not by the whites, but the Africans. So he was also active in politics. For example, he was secretary for the West Nyasa Native Association, apart from being uh, the councillor to Inkosi Yamakosi. So he was a councillor uh, of Inkosi Yamakosi as well as uh, the uh, secretary for Nyasa, West Nyasa Native Association, Yesaya Zerenje Mase. Later, he became a member of the Atonga Tribal Council. So he became a member of that. And also, he was a founding member of the Nyasaland African Congress. So you see to it, he was af active in politics, Yesaya Zerenje Mwase. He was one of the fine, uh, founding members of the Nyasaland African Congress. Uh, that is today we call the MCP today. Uh, Yesaya Zerenje Mwase was among the first people who formed that, uh, uh, that party, Nyasaland African Congress. Other supporters of the Black Man's Church were uh, Reverend, Reverend Bodhi Manda and Yesaya Mlonyeni Chiwambo. So all these, uh, they were the supporters of this activity or this movement or this church, Black Man's Church by Yesaya Zerenje Mwase. Another church that were under that Mpingo Wa Fipa Mu Africa was it? The Ecclesia Luanangwa, Ecclesia Luanangwa, Luanangwa uh, in 1934. So it was the Sazu Home Mission by Charles Chidongo Chinura. So it was formed by Charles Chidongo Chinura. For some time, he had been underground uh, rebel of the Livingstonia Mission. He did not like the Livingstonia Mission. He was working underground. He was influenced by Charles Domingo and Yesaya Zerenje Mwase. So Charles Domingo and uh, Yesaya Zerenje influenced uh, this Charles Chidongo to say, no, uh, we need to form our own church, our own independent churches. So in 1930, Chinua was removed from the Livingstonia mission due to a number of reasons. Number one, he encouraged his students to take part in traditional dances. He believed that African customs and culture should be uh, neglected, but uh, must be purified and maintained. So he said uh, the African culture should not, should not be neglected, uh, but they just need to be purified and maintained. In 1934, he was involved in the sex scandal. In the same year, he formed his church. So he was uh, also involved in the sex scandal. Then he was expelled from the church and he formed the church in the same year. He, uh, also the delay, uh, delay to ordain him as a church minister. So also uh, because uh, he, he was delayed, he was, de he was delayed to be ordained as a minister, as a pastor. So the emphasis of his church was evangelization and education. So he emphasized on education of Africans as well as uh, 
evangelization, the spread of the gospel. He was also an active, uh, active in the Mombera Native Society and the Nyasaland African Congress and was once the vice president of the uh, Nyasaland African Congress, that is uh, Chinula. So we see to it that uh, uh, he was active in politics as well as in the church. So uh, that's how uh, he formed his church to go against the, uh, the, the church and the government. Another church was uh, this one, that is Children of God, Anna Mulungu by Wilfred Good, 1935. It was founded by uh, Wilfred Good of Tiolo. So he broke away from the Seventh-day Adventist mission at Maramulo in Tiolo. So he broke away because he was not happy with the way the church handled an adultery case. So Good advised his followers not to pay taxes. The government arrested him and 29 of his followers. So while at Zomba prison, they refused to wear a uniform or obey prison rules. They said they, uh, they said that they obey God's law only. So the colonial government deported him to Kalonga where he remained until 1942. So we see to it that uh, Wilfred Good, he uh, get away from the Seventh-day Adventist church or mission at Maramuro in Tiolo and he formed his church which was called Anna Amurungu, Anna Amurungu. So he was arrested and later deported to Karonga. Now here let us look at the, we have looked at the different churches. To this far, you know some of these notable churches that were there, that were, uh, that went out of the uh, mission that were established by the whites. So you know them and who started them and uh, the role or the reasons why they formed their churches and uh, even their preachings. So let us look at the role played by the independent churches in Malawi. Number one, the leaders acted as the spokespersons for the voiceless masses against the colonial government's harsh policies. So they were like the spokespersons, the spokespersons of the harsh policies against the uh, colonial government. They also showed that Christianity could be practiced without abandoning African culture because most of them, they maintained their African culture. They still emphasize to say African culture uh, uh, must be there and Christianity must be uh, included in the African culture. They promoted civilization among Africans through schools, skills and agriculture. So civilization was promoted there through education and promotion of skills and the improved agriculture. And also they gave hope, they gave hope to the oppressed Africans to look forward uh, to the future. Uh, to the future happiness and prosperity after the British rule. So they gave hope to say, no, we are oppressed now, but there is hope after the British rule. They also paved the way uh, to the development of African nationalism. So the quest, the quest to fight for independence, it was developed with the, uh, the starting of these independent churches to say, if we can be independent from the church, what? can stop us to be independent from the government. So uh, they uh, do, did that. So it was like a way, a starting point of nationalism. The Europeans realized that Africans, if given an opportunity, can do well in anything. For example, in politics, religion, education, and many others. So the Europeans, they realized, saying, yes, uh, these Africans, we can say, uh, we can say that they are second class, but no, if they are given the good opportunity, uh, they can do many things. So thanks to Joseph Booth, who realized that even these Africans can do better. That's why he supported them much. He supported them much so that they uh, can rise uh, to the point to be equal with the, the whites. And also they promoted a form of refer uh, reformation in the mainstream churches. For example, they forced the, uh, forced the European leadership of these mainstream churches to incorporate certain African elements like dances, drums, tunes of hymns, 
uh, and a number of things in the worship. So we see to it that uh, with that, with the independent churches, then the mainstream or the European churches, now they started to fine tune, they started to uh, incorporate some of the African elements in their churches so that they should not lose all Africans uh, in their churches. So here, let us look at the contributions. What were the contributions of the African independent churches towards the rise of nationalism? Number one, we are saying uh, uh, they provided a platform for teaching Africans some political beliefs. Just as we have looked at, we said that uh, most of the preachers, they were against the, the uh, colonial policies, especially taxation. Hence, it was like a platform for political beliefs. And again, they showed that some Africans could stand on their own or lead themselves. So uh, it showed that Africans could be independent as well. And the churches provided the first political leaders. So the first political leaders in Malawi, they were from the church, from the church. So we should not forget that one. And African independent churches provided a basis for political participation on the uh, part of Africa. So uh, it was a basis of, of, for political participation. To say, uh, just as we have talked of Chidembe, to say when they were uh, done with preaching at the same day, then they could discuss about politics to say how best do we go against these uh, challenges that we are facing that are imposed on us on or by the whites. So uh, it was like uh, the basis for political participation. And also, it provided a platform for Africans to voice out their grievances against the punitive measures and policies that were implemented by the colonial government. So we see to it that Africans were able to voice out what, uh, their pain, uh, their sorrow that was inside them, that were infringed by them, onto them by the colonial government. So they were able to voice out to say, ah, uh, God hear us, look at these whites, they are impinging on us on different ways. So it was like a way of voicing out their grievances. But these churches, they had some weaknesses. What were the weaknesses of these African independent churches? Number one, churches, uh, these churches encourage civil disobedience through uh, their preaching against the colonial administration. So they were preaching something like a rebellion, a rebellion, something like that. So a church or the word of God cannot be a rebellious word of God. So it was, it was encouraging civil disobedience, civil disobedience. As such, even after uh, they, uh, they gained or we gained independence, still more civil disobedience has been the order of the day each and every decade each and every five years we hear uh, of civil disobedience now and again why it started with the leaders of the church they were preaching as if as if always the whites were against them against them so they should always be against the whites so civil disobedience it has been an element that has been planted planted in the people and again, uh, these churches were supported to be independent. Were supposed to be independent. However, some had connection with whites and received aid from abroad. E.g., uh, we are talking of Charles uh, Domingo of the Seventh Day Baptist had contacts with uh, Joseph Booth. So they were not totally uh, independent because uh, they were also getting support from uh, from outside from outside from the same whites whom they were uh, they were against so it was not totally they were not totally independent so it is it's still maybe common even today you see all those churches that are, are there you find that some of them they say ah this is a purely african church here yeah, this is land managed by us but usually they also go back to the colonial masters and say, ah, we are receiving aid from our friends in UK, our friends in America, our friends where, wherever. Uh, they support this church like that. No, uh, if it is an African church, let the Africans support that church uh, like that. 
So uh, they were supposed to be independent, but they were still had some connections with the uh, outside. And most of the churches depended on uh, their founders such that some ceased to exist after the death of their founders. So some of these churches, they did not have that succession plan as a church to say right after uh, this one or leadership plan to say it is going to be like that as a such uh, there was the first one who started it and after that death then they ceased to exist because uh, they only depended on one leader to say oh this one has got everything that we need so it was like the leaders they took themselves to say they know it all they put the bible aside they did not tell the people to follow only what is the bible they were only to guide uh, they are to guide and others were to succeed and guide the church so it was a problem in that way so to this far we have come to the end of this topic now, as you have seen, it has uh, been a wonderful topic whereby we have been looking at the, uh, the churches or independent churches that were there in Malawi. We have looked at a number of them. So uh, we have looked at their preaching and uh, many other aspects there. But now here with me is, uh, it is an end of topic, an end of topic exercise, just as we usually do. So uh, this is the end of topic exercise. So uh, remember to do it. So number one, it says give the meaning of the African independent church churches and give any three factors that led to the formation of the African independent churches. And number three, outline any three malpractices uh, uh, the European missionary controlled men, uh, any three malpractices of the uh, European uh, missionary controlled mainstream churches and also number four give any four contributions of the uh, African independent churches towards the rise of nationalism and also number five it says explain any three weaknesses of the African independent churches but here with me I also have an essay so in the essay you are going to describe some of the African independent churches. Remember, the essay at this level carries 20 marks. So make sure that you uh, uh, you make your points that you attract the 20 marks. So write it, write this exercise. It is a very, very brief one, but it is crucial because it tackles almost every part that we have handled so far. So after you are done, just as usual, Take a pen and paper, write clearly, and yeah, after you are done, then you scan or you take a photo and send your answers to this WhatsApp number that is here. Uh, forward it to this WhatsApp number. It is there to receive your, your, your responses. Or if you have a privilege of the email, you can send it to this email, uh, email uh, that is here. So send your email ashmarembatgmail.com so you do that then your email reaches me or your whatsapp photo reaches me i'm going to do the same i download i mark and i'll send you the response as well so do this uh do this because it is very very important so to this far we have come to the end we have come to the end of form three work that is in history so we have looked at a number of topics here uh, the 19th century immigrants we looked at the lome we looked at the yao we looked at the ngoni the Levere, the ngoni we looked at the zwangenda wangoni the uh and maseko ngoni we looked at them all this went through mm -hmm. uh, growth of trade we looked at that the portuguese factor the missionary factor the way we looked at christianity we looked at uh, islam uh, all those things in maui and uh, the uh, we also looked at the british occupation of central africa whereby we looked at southern rhodesia northern rhodesia and the uh, the uh, nyasaland we also looked at the economic policies up to independence in southern rhodesia northern rhodesia as well as nyasaland and from there uh, it's where now we are looking at uh, 
uh, this topic now, the African independent uh, churches that were there. So we have covered a lot of topics that are there. So to this far, I hope that you have uh, at least acquired all the information that is required. Remember, the best time to gather all information is when you are in school. The best time to stick to these things is when you are in school, because at that time when you are done with your secondary school level, these things are done as well. So the best time to know these things is this one. Don't reserve your time to say, oh, after I'm finished, uh, I'm finished with school, I'm going to get back and study these things. No, these ones are for secondary school. Uh, the next stage has got its own problems as well, its own work to do. So don't bother. Don't bother, uh, don't procrastinate to say, oh, I'm going to do these things tomorrow. No, the best time to gather all information is now when you are in school. Because when you go out empty-headed, I tell you, you look ugly, very ugly. You look sick, huh? ugly, sick, broke, and very stupid to say, ah, this guy went to school for years, but he's nothing. Yeah? So the end of it all, I tell you, if you know these things, you master these things when you are in school, you'll be a master at the second level, at the next level. After you are done, you go to college, say, oh, uh, with your good points, it's like you are carrying the world in your hand. So uh, be the one, be the one uh, to do these things while you are in school. It's not easy. It's not easy to uh, do these things. Uh, it's very hard. School is hard, especially to read, to study, to listen. Sometimes when you listen, it is, uh, it is, I, you become so bored. Say, ah, all these names, all these words. Yes, all those names, they are there for you in Form 3. You have to know them in secondary school. You know them. That's why we put these things on the video, because sometimes you miss, sometimes you miss these aspects in class for a number of reasons sometimes maybe the teacher was not there was busy just gave you the work but you could not understand then you missed it, and you are not able to understand it so sometimes you were sick you did not attend the class the time you open the book you cannot understand so we put these things on the dvd uh, with that aim to say all right you do it you do it again you do it again the time you are in secondary school because by the time you are done with secondary school and you take this DVD and you are busy doing it, the world will laugh at you for sure to say, what is this guy doing? Did he not have time in Form 3 to do these things? So the time for doing these things is now. You can do it as many times as you want. Repeat geography, repeat agriculture, repeat mathematics, repeat whatever. During this time you are in secondary school. You can do it as many times as you want. You can become as, as tired as you can, but you have to do it. You just do it. If you do it now, you are going to be a champion one day. So remember, this is the end of the work. So I have talked a lot. It, was just, it is just my advice to you to say you gather all information while you are in secondary school. Because this is not the work for college. This is not the work uh, when you are now old enough and you say, ah, now let me study about independent churches. No, it's just maybe for pleasure. But for serious business, it's now. This is the right time. So you repeat these things. You repeat wherever you missed the concept. That's why we say you have need to have all these things at your home comfort. You go to school, you learn them, you miss the concept, you repeat it, repeat it again, go to school, you learn, you miss the concept, you repeat it until you are done with your secondary school. By that time when you are done, the time it comes to write exams, you'll be a champion because you have mastered these things and you'll be ex 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 excelling unstoppably, unstoppably, and they hide. You know what? The top position, there are very few, posi uh, few people who are there because uh, it is a competition to go there. So let's meet at the top because I'm also uh, a, uh, fighting to be at the top. So let's, you find me there or I'll find you there. So let's meet at the top. So to this far, we have come to the end of this work. But the work doesn't end in Form 3. History doesn't end in Form 3. Much as you, are, you have arrived here, 
make sure you do it, do it, do it now and again. But the next thing after this, because from three and from four work, they go together. That's what you are going to write during Manipo exam. So the next topic is the first topic in form four. And the first topic in form four, it is none as other than the causes and the results of the first world war. The causes and the results of the first world war. So this one, all the form four work is already there on the DVD. All it needs now, when you are done with this form three work, start now one by one your dvd one by one one topic after the other one topic after the other then up to the time you finish them all so up to that time uh, i'll be waiting for your call because now you are finished this week so take up that call call to say i need first topic from four then i'll be sending it to you instantly so thank you so much for your attention and i wish you success during the money exams take care Thank you.